Hello learners. In this lecture, we will see what are the characteristics of a aircraft. So these are the characteristics of aircraft. The first is a aircraft capacity. Then we have aircraft speed, aircraft weight and wheel arrangement, fuel spilling, jet blast, minimum circling radius, minimum turning radius, noise, range, size of aircraft, take off and landing distances, type of propulsion, tire pressure and contact area. So now we'll try to see uh, each of them in detail, right? Yeah. So uh, sometimes they are going to ask you, uh, give the typical layout of an airport. So in that case, you can draw this diagram for that. Uh, I not explain this in a, while I was explaining the layout of airport. So if they ask you the sketch of a typical layout of airport, try to draw this diagram and try to explain those uh, layout what I've explained in the earlier lectures. Yeah. So the first is the aircraft capacity. The capacity of an aircraft will determine the number of passengers, baggage, cargo, and fuel that can be accommodated in the aircraft. The terminal facilities are planned to receive the aircraft of the highest capacity that is likely to land. So this is the first uh, point that is the aircraft capacity. The second is the aircraft speed. The aircraft speed is referred in many ways. We have two. The first one is the air speed and the second is the ground speed. So when do we use this air speed? The term air speed is used to mean the speed of the aircraft, which is related to the medium in which it is traveling. Whereas the ground speed, which is sometimes also referred to as a cruising speed, is the speed of an aircraft, which is relative to the ground. So here the medium is ground, but here in whichever medium it is traveling. So that will be the reference for me. Yeah. So the next one is a aircraft weight and wheel arrangement. It is necessary to understand the components of the aircraft, which makes up its weight during the takeoff and landing, because weight is one of the major factors which will govern the length and the thickness of the runway. So this also uh, is one of the characteristics of a aircraft that is a weight and the, the way the wheel is arranged. The next one is a fuel spillage. The spilling of fuel and lubricants is usually found in the loading apprents and, and the hangars area because in the hangars for the maintenance and all when you keep the aircraft and also in the apprents area during the loading and unloading time. This is the time where the aircraft will be in contact with the you know ground for the most period of time. So it is difficult to avoid spilling completely, but efforts are made to bring it with a minimum limit. The payment of bituminous material is seriously affected. You can see if this is made up of bituminous, the payment of bituminous material is seriously affected by fuel spilling and hence the areas of bituminous payment bel below the fueling inlets, the engines and main landing gears are kept under constant watch by the airport authorities. So wherever there is a chance of spilling is more, those particular area are kept under the airport authorities under the constant watch. So the next factor is the jet blast. So the turbo jet and turbo prop aircraft eject hot exhaust gases at relatively high velocities. The velocity of jet blast may be as high as 300 km per hour and it may even cause inconvenience to the passengers boarding the aircraft. For this purpose, several types of blast furnace, blast fences are available to serve as an effective measure for diverting the small smoke ejected by the engine. So you can see, see it here, right? So they have put up a board here, danger, jet blast of departing and arriving aircraft can cause severe physical harm resulting in extreme bodily harm or death, right? So such uh, signage boards will be put up so that uh, there is no such kind of uh, problems happening. Next is the minimum circling radius. A certain minimum radius in space is required for the aircraft to take a smooth turn, right? Let us say, yeah, this is your landing area. So what will happen? The aircraft will come from here, right? So before it comes here, it, it will take certain round here and then it's going to come in this way. So the certain minimum radius in space is required for the aircraft to take a smooth turn. It is known as the minimum circling radius and it depends upon the type of the aircraft, the air volume and the weather condition. A knowledge of minimum circling radius helps in separating two nearby airports by an adequate distance so that the aircraft landing simultaneously on them do not interfere with each other. So whenever you have uh, two airports nearby, usually we don't have a certain uh, zones for that, right? Even after that, if, if there are certain um, aircraft, 
then uh, airport nearby then what will happen this minimum radius will give us an idea to at what adequate distance so the two airport should be so that it will not affect the minimum circling radius if it is not possible to provide such distance the timing of landing and takeoff of aircraft in each airport will have to be suitably adjusted right if you cannot give a minimum circling radius maybe due to some problem then what will happen the landing in one airport and the takeoff in the other airport or the landing in both airports should be it uh, the timing should be changed right and the last one is this aspect will reduce the capacity of the airport airport if you do in that way then each time the landing happens the both the airport have to be coordinated so that there is no problems and all as a result of that what will happen the capacity of the airport is going to come down so these are certain things that is given given here we have the category of airport like a airport b c d and e and this is a radius which is given in miles right 1.3 1.5 this is a minimum uh, circling radius for a c class airport for a d class and for a e e category airport yeah and the next one what we have is the minimum turning radius it is necessary to know the minimum turning radius of an aircraft to decide the radius of a taxiway and to ascertain its position in the landing approns and hangars so you can see here so this is the aircraft which is kept here so this is the center for that and from here to here it is given as minimum turning radius and from here if you try to turn it should not interfere and in, interfere anyway so this is a path of a nose gear so this is a minimum turning radius and the last yeah and the last three points what we have is first next is a takeoff and landing distances the takeoff and landing distances for an aircraft will help it determining the minimum runway length required for a particular type of aircraft these distances depend on the following factors first is the altitude of the airport the second is a gradient of the runway the third is the intensity and direction of the wind the fourth is the manner of landing and takeoff the fifth is the temperature and the weight of the aircraft at the time of landing and takeoff right so again it depends on the takeoff and landing distance also and these are the points on which all those things are considered next is type of propulsion the types of engine which is used in a aircraft have been yeah so this the method of propulsion adopted for a particular aircraft will decide the size speed weight carrying capacity noise nuisance circling radius and other things so the type of propulsion also is one of the characteristics of a aircraft and the last is the tire pressure and contact area the tire pressure at the wheel load will give an indication of the width type and strength of pavement required for the different types of the aircraft so again because when we had done the classification of an airport the classification itself was done on the pressure and the contact area also right so again that also is one of the characteristics of a aircraft and these are the things that we need to understand so i hope you have got an idea so this was almost all theory part in this uh, sometimes they will ask you write the uh, characteristics of a aircraft then this is how we write all uh, 10 or 12 different points and then we can try to explain four or five points out of this yeah so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you